Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, 7.21 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, January 22, 2024. So as I, I put in, in the market wrap, you know, the Delta is still bullish. We are in a positive gamma. What's, what's the meaning of the positive gamma? Buy weakness or, or buy support, sell rallies, right? So this is the gamma design left in the book Friday. I told you guys that 4,800... 4850 supposed to be the new magneto accord gamma right uh the dx and in gx also sh still showing us bullishness even if you see a little drop not too much drop in dix came from 48 percent to 47.8 percent is a little do drop in another hand they accelerate the market because the gx dropped two billions of course, you know, a new flow start to be created in the book. So it's totally normal to see a drop in the GX. Okay, a lot of, of the old flows are already gone. The new flow is coming. But the delta flow is still bullish. We are in a positive gun. I also highlighted to see a, a pullback on Monday. It's totally normal. 4,815 supposed to be the bio, uh, buyable uh, region. In the worst case scenario, 4802. And I highlighted 4850 became the magnet, right? We don't have anything that could impact DXY or TNX today. Consequently, you know, Monday, since we don't have any macro agenda, any economic agenda, Monday uh, tend to be tend to be a bullish, a bullish day. Right, because the safe having assets don't have any trigger to spike up. Consequently, we still in a risk on mode. Yeah, we are still in a risk on mode. The agenda, the economic agenda, start only on Thursday. Okay, start only on Thursday. Mainly, start at 8:15 with the ECB interest rate decision. We have the core PCE and etc. Job less, blah blah blah. I put over here. But I have been telling you guys, in my humble opinion, that's personal. Mine doesn't mean that I'm right, right? Market nowadays is not more concerning about inflation. For me, market nowadays is more more concerning about company results, right? And this week is a little bit busy week regarding company results. We have Verizon, we have Netflix, we have TNT, we have Tesla, IBM, we have a bunch of techs, right? Uh, Visa, Levi is a good, you know, Levi is a good measure because it's retail dress, I mean, pants, jeans. So it's a good, you know, thermometer to see if retail keep in buying, right? And that's it. So, for me, market nowadays is looking more is looking more for company results than inflation. Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, we just review. Yeah, I also highlighted in the open group. Sorry, in the closed group. Let me put over here. Even, even you know, uh, I also even you know, you see a pullback. Is bullish for today. Somebody sold four thousand eight hundred and forty call, break even twenty nine. Remember, they sold at the close by 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 ten point fifty. So we need to look for four thousand eight hundred and forty as a support for today, right? Because if just you know to see if the guy wants to take 100% premium, I highlighted this in the group. I put so uh, uh, above you can find the market structure from Monday. Also, we have some orders in the book that suggest as a pullback. A screenshot below, I and then I put, however, as I see in the document above, a pullback you, you should uh, be Bible. And then at you know below, I said break even 29. Adding 10 points is straight for 2019. So region where options suggest be, be buyable. In another hand, if such a player sold it 
RIX, look for XP, trading above 4,840. Market future suggestion is up with 20 points gap up. By price action, by future, the player sold that put, right? Structure delta gamma is still showing bullishness, not weakness. Okay. Anyway, if they want to dump. 4,850 supposed to be the buyer. Since we are open with 20 points gap up, forget 4,802. We need that trigger to take us there. Right? 4,840 because this order, I'm not even open the spreadsheet right now, that is the main support that you need to look for. Okay? But per gamma, 4,850, right? Was the magneto is where you have the higher gamma. So per gamma, 4,850 now is the support. Guys, what I have been told you guys, this is this crash that everybody's calling is the easiest crash call ever. Is going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. The problem is we don't know the timing. Period. Period and period. If you guys look for, first of all, graphically, you know, we don't have any weakness in the graph as well. All the indicators are still showing by. Every GP has been observed. Also, we are in a positive gamma. Remember what I post this to you guys on Friday? You know, per graphic figure, looks like that we form, you know, a, a copy handle. The target of this is something. Let me get over here. So, the top of the cup was... Ah, uh, one, one second. Yeah, but the, I mean, the target of this cup in handle is something a, 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 around like 6,000. 6,000. I swear that I'm not seeing this because I look to, um, I don't lose Fibonacci, I don't lose any, anything of this, you know? I just use pivot size. Regarding the pivot, we have two important pivot, one in the quarterly graph and one in another annual graph that you already break. So according to the pivots, usually market tend to mirror the size of the pivot, right? So my two targets, since you already break, I cannot predict the future. This is just not, this is just a projection according to the size of the pivot that the markets already break, okay? So my two regions that I'm looking for is 5,200 and 5,700. But if you look for the cup and handle, put in the monthly graph, see, if you look for the cup and handle, we're talking about what the, the 4,818. For monthly graph, for the cup and hand, the pivot is over here, 4,818, 4,818. Minus the bottom of the, the, the cup, 3,491, 3,491, right? 1,327 points, plus 4,818, that was the resistance. We talk about 6,145, okay? That's the target for this cup and handle. Okay, it's something around this. Okay, 6,000. It's around uh, 6,000. But if you look for here, 
a cup start of here is a little bit lower. 4,540. So, so imagine the cup and handle is here. Okay. Cup and handle. So 4,500. The close here. 4,540. 4,540. Minus the bottom. 3,591. We talk about 1,000 points, plus 4,540, we talk about 5,589, very close, you know, to mirror the annual pivot, okay? Very close, very close. If you check the cup and handle like this, uh, here, handle, and now break and going up. So, breaking 4,540, target 5,589. So, per graphic, graphical figure, we talk about 5,589. Per pivot annual, three-quarter pivot, 5,215. And per annual pivot, 5,716. That's the projection that we have per pivot. Okay? Just per pivot. Incredible. Yes, incredible, but... Could go in there. And why is coding going there? That's something that I have been repeating to you guys. Look at real economy. <coughs> Let's put in the monthly graph that you guys have a better vision. You know, you know it's better. Sorry. Okay. We talk about 77% drop Walgreens. Crash. Crash, right? One, one, just one. Let me get another one, Disney. That's a good, a, a very good ter thermometer because this company do everything. From the highs to the lows, we talk about 60% drop, right? Crash, right? Crash. Uh, let me get another one. PayPal is a good example. Came from 310 up to the bottom. 83.78% drop. It's crash, right? Crash. But I like to, to show you guys, you know, more the real economy. Because the real economy is a more is a better thermometer, you know, compared, for example, PayPal, because this is more like financial. But you guys see Walmart, Walgreens, Boeing, 30% in 15 days. So if dealers want now to melt up those assets, I just, you know, the, use the examples that I told you guys. PayPal, Disney, Walmart, Point. And start to sell the Magnificent 7. Slowly, not like dump like 10%, because you now the weight of those seven companies in the SP500 is really high. So if they sunk the Magni Magnificent 7, the market will crash. Hope you guys also understand that. But if they start to sell little by little, like little drops, 0.2%, uh, 0.5%, less than 1%, and start to bring, you know, real economy up, we, got, we will not see any crash. We will see indices going up. Right? We will see indices, indexes going up. They just rebalance, you know, the SP500 because the SP500 
it's totally unbalanced, right? Because SP500, I post, uh, I also post in the closed group, it's something that, you know, somebody post that what I have been saying a lot. The SP500 nowadays became, you know, a tech ETF. It's over here. So a few people is not understand that. A few people is not understand that. The SP500 is not more 500 companies. Because the weight of those seven companies in the index is so high that if you, as you saw, you sunk Disney, you sunk Boeing, you sunk GE, GE, you sunk like PayPal, you sunk, you know, whatever. Markets not going down because they melting up seven assets. So the weight became so high in SP500. That was an amazing post. And this is what I have been telling you guys. So they can start to rotate. They can remove the weight from those seven assets, you know, and make SP500 again SP500. Hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. Okay. I see a couple of stocks, but look BMW, look Mercedes, look Ford. It looked like a, a, a became a meme stock, electrical company, car company that Fisca, FSR. All those assets sunk as well. Okay, let me let me show you guys here. Let me use uh, the, uh, Volkswagen. Me put the annual graph. Volkswagen, look from the top to the bottom. Ninety two point seventy eight per cent drop. Same as F FCR. Nine a Volkswagen ninety two per cent drop from current price. We talk about 89% drop, Volkswagen. Let's use FSR, became a meme stock. From the top, 97% drop also. Let's check uh, Mercedes-Benz, Mercedes. From the top, up to the bottom, drop 82%. Up to current price, we talk about 50%. Is already crash, right? So all the automobile companies already drop 89%. It's not only fiscal. But Mercedes in Volkswagen, right? So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. That's the most dangerous market ever. The crash colors are totally right, but the problem is they are very crash. The majority of the assets and they put a lot of weight, you know, in, in seventy sites, seventy assets as well. What they can do, repeating, being repetitive. They start to sell the Magnificent, Magnificent 7 and they start to buy the real economy assets like Mercedes, Ford, you know, Disney, Boeing, and etc. And etc. And, and then, you know, move SP500 to be the real SP500. Because nowadays, it's a Magnificent 7. It's a tech ETF. This was an excellent post. But I have been telling you guys this since last year. The crash colors are not wrong. They are totally right. They are 100% right. 
but they are wrong regarding the time. Nobody knows when it will going to happen. What I told you guys also in our enclosed group here is something that Fed, the Federal Reserve announced last week. They said they want to force out the banks, out the institutions to borrow money from them through the discount window instead of, instead of to use a you No, know, to use the what you know they use because every single bank at the close they ask for money because their treasure department don't close the cash the, 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 don't close you know the, don't close the bill sometimes you know the banks and banks don't close you know the, the gap and they need to borrow money to close the gap that they have in our in, in our in their books Okay, so every in overnight, you know, uh, there's a lot of borrow and loan between banks, between institutions, and they use a uh, 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 I forgot the name how to say a rate called Ameribor, right? Before it was libel. But what Federal Reserve is trying to do, they're trying to force everybody instead to borrow from the market to borrow direct to the Federal Reserve with a discount window higher than a Maribor. What this means? They are draining liquidity and then and maybe, and, and not maybe, and they are trying to own everything. The, you know, the central bank is trying to own everything. What I'm looking for is that, you know, the central bank is trying to crash this stuff. That's my interpretation. I could be totally wrong. But, you know, what the Federal Reserve announced last week, for me, it's not bullish at all. I don't know what is behind that decision. So, it's a guess. And everybody that you comment about this, you're guessing too. But for me, it's not bullish. Okay? Guys, I'm finished by now. Take care. Enjoy your day. And... Save as much money as possible. Be debt free. Because in a near term, don't know if it'll be this year, next year, but I think don't pass from off 2016. Will you see the biggest buy opportunity ever? Take care.